Welcome everybody to another Together class. So if you have a yoga block at home, you might find it useful for uh, one of our warming up core drills, but never fear if you don't have a yoga block, you can still do the drill without it. It'll just help to engage some things for you. Uh, for today, we're gonna be getting started on our backs. So we can all come down onto the ground. Just have your block handy. You don't need it for the first ramp pose that we'll be getting everything fired up with, but lay on down, walk those feet in. You can even bring your hands on top of your thighs. Press your palms into the tops of those thighs, root your tailbone towards the heels, and you're gonna squeeze into the glutes. Press your feet down into the floor, lifting the toes, maybe even bring them down one at a time. And just let your toes grip down onto the mat as they come down. So you get this nice spreading of the foot and this like engagement through the bottom of the foot. The hips are in extension here and you're, you're squeezing into those glutes. So take an exhale, feel the front line of the body draw down and into the back line of the body and everything is lengthening there. And then we'll take our hands up towards the ceiling. We'll start to stretch out in our wrists. So we'll bring our right hand over those left fingers, stretching them on out here. Let's pulse it a couple of times. So we'll just start to lift and lower the hips. And if you feel like the low back is what's firing up for you, then come a little bit lower for me and really let yourself feel into the glutes. So you wanna feel, especially where your legs are plugging into those glutes, that lower half of the glutes, that is firing up for you. And we'll switch wrists. So you can take it over to the other wrist, give a nice little stretch here. Big breaths here, especially as you start to feel the heat. So the glutes are gonna get fatigued. That's sort of why we're starting off with this. Those glutes are so big and so strong, but for a lot of us, they tend to be a little underactive. So we wanna make sure that the biggest, strongest muscles in the body are ready to go to do movements. They're gonna be pretty much contributing to almost every movement of the hip. You can release the right wrist. Let's circle our wrists a few times. Just continue to pulse here a few more times. Really, really nice. And then hold your bridge here, continue to root your tailbone and bring your hands back onto your thighs. Just real quick here, take your palms and press along your thighs and straighten out the elbows as you press your palms forward. Allow yourself to just feel more of an opening at this front hip flexor. So again, it's not about how high up your pelvis is. In fact, your pelvis can be pretty low. It's just that you most likely probably need to inch your feet a little bit further forward, but you can still get this wonderful extension into the hips. And the hip extension is what we're going for here. Today's class is, is called How to Get Funky. So we're doing some asymmetrical balancing, some funky dolphin stuff. Let's bring ourselves on down from that upper middle and lower back and grab your block. So here's where we will grab that block and bring it in between the knees. So take your block on the widest setting in between your knees. And if you don't have a block for one, you can keep your feet on the ground the whole time. When we do one of our last moves though, uh, you won't be moving your actual pelvis. It'll be stuck on the ground. Otherwise, keep your knees over top of the hips. And even if you don't have the block, you can still go with the knees over the hips option and just you know keep like a little sense of engagement of keeping the legs centered. But the block will be wide setting if you have it up in between your knees. I really just like this, a really nice way when you squeeze in there, you just feel this whole sense of like zip and consolidation right into this uh, little diamond here. You could imagine like where the pelvis sort of goes down to its triangular shape with this other triangle that sort of forms where the ribs fuse together. This whole little diamond area is just cinching together with that uh, block. So hopefully you're not holding your head up like I've been doing here, just kind of trying to explain things, but let your neck relax. Take your hands behind your head, interlace the fingers, squeeze in that block, big inhale here. The feet are on the ground, that's great. Exhale and lift. So knees are either over the hips or the feet can be on the ground, but the shoulder blades are up off of the ground and we're squeezing into that block if we have it. Belly draws down, inhale and lower. Keep that engagement around the core, but exhale and lift. Shoulder blades come up. They don't have to come up very high, but I want you to focus on pulling down into that region around the belly button. Inhale and lower. Add on a little bit here. Exhale and lift. The feet are on the ground. You can still do this. Take a little twist to the left. You're just twisting an inch or two through the center of the core and trying to keep your left shoulder blade off of the ground. Come back through center. 
Inhale and lower. Exhale and lift. Belly draws down. Take a little twist to the right. So you're twisting to the right. Your right shoulder blades off the ground. You're squeezing into that block. Come back through center. Inhale and lower. So now we'll add swiveling the pelvis a little bit. If your feet are on the floor, you won't be doing that, but you'll just keep going with the twist. Inhale. Exhale and lift. Take a little twist to the left. Squeeze into your block and then swivel your pelvis so that your thighs point towards the right. So I guess you're swiveling your pelvis a little over to the left. You're kind of crunching that left side of the hip towards that left rib. And bring yourself back through center, untwist, inhale and lower. This is a big twist that comes through there. Exhale and left, twist to the right. So everyone will do that if your legs are up. Swivel your pelvis to the right and then you'll point your thighs towards the left. So it's like, you know, the front of your block is just pointing like a little bit over to the left and you're still twisting to the right. So you'll come back through center, inhale and lower. Exhale and lift, this will be our last one on each side. A little twist to the left, swivel the pelvis to the right so the thighs are pointing off to the left and then take your right hand onto the face of that block and resist it and press against it. And then they kind of resist each other and come back through center, hand comes back, inhale and lower. Exhale and lift, squeezing the block. <sighs> Belly draws down, twist to the right. So the pelvis face towards the left, so it cuts a little swivel to the right as well. And then you press that left hand into the face of the block. Should be feeling a big engagement through that oblique. You'll bring it back through center, inhale and lower. Oh, take out the block. Widen the feet, drop the knees off to the left. Don't worry about if your knees drop down or anything like that. Pushing the inner left foot, squeeze the left glute. You can take your right hand to your left front hip. Just like we kind of did in our bridge, you could also reach your left arm up and overhead. And Give it one more big breath here, all the way up into your side ribs. Press that left heel and squeeze the left glute, root your tailbone to the heels. <laughs> Bring yourself back through center. Drop your knees the other way. So knees will drop opposite direction. You'll press into the heel of the foot that's behind you. Your hand on that hip that we're opening, so the opposite hand comes in front of that hip. Bring that palm there, squeeze the glute, you can even reach the right arm up. Big inhale there. And exhale. Squeeze, 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 and that glute rooting the tailbone down. Breathe up into the ribs. Keep pushing into your heel and keep the glute on. And then you'll bring yourself back through center. We'll come around to our quadruped. So we'll come into a quadruped and we're gonna set ourselves up with a little move that we'll be doing today. So whether you wanna go for the funky dolphin or not in the flow, that will actually be optional, but we'll all still work the mechanics of asymmetrical balancing. So I want you to start off in your quadruped with your hands under your shoulders. Knees can either be under the hips or walked in a, a good bit closer towards your wrists. You find what's comfortable for you. But let's start off uh, working our right side. So you'll bring your left forearm down onto the ground and keep your right palm where it is underneath the right shoulder, but move your left hand forward so that now it's, it's more like your left elbow is underneath of that left shoulder. And the right hand is lined up with it underneath that right shoulder. But bend the right elbow and, and give it a little like squeeze in here. So notice it's really winging out on you. Just squeeze it in enough. Like remember we get that cue, dial the right hand out to the right without actually moving it. Let it plug your shoulder blade onto the back rib. All the while, push your forearm onto the ground. That'll help hold your left uh, shoulder blade onto the back rib. So just like uh, we always do, let's check in. Neck isn't drooping, but we're kind of lifting our throat into the back of the neck. You're long in the spine, like reaching through the top of the head. The low ribs are pulling in. We're not sinking and lifting the tailbone. Now we're gonna either, maybe even bring the left knee in a little bit closer to center because we're gonna hover the right knee. Now extend the right leg back behind you and just drive that heel and feel your right glute is working for you to do that. There's a little bit of asymmetrical balance here on the left and the right. We'll bring our right knee down next to the left. Extend it back behind you one more time like this. So the right heel just drives, toes are still pointing down. And now we're gonna start to open the leg up a little bit. So bring it down next to the left, just hovering. As you extend it, roll the right thigh out. We'll still keep some containment of the pelvis. We're really literally just moving this leg bone in the hip socket. So we'll do it a few more times. Right knee comes down to hover and then extend it, open it up. It comes down with a little hover, little extension and open it up. Yeah, that's looking really good. So keep that pelvis contained. You're just moving in that hip socket, containing in the core all the while should feel just a little bit of asymmetrical load coming onto that left side since we have more 
of that left side in connection with the floor than we do on that right. All right, bring that right knee on down next to the left. We'll come back into our quadruped, set it up pretty similarly. The right forearm will come down. Your right elbow is in line with that left palm. They're both underneath their respective shoulders. You can bring the right knee in a little bit closer into the center. It's a good tip too when we're in our like three-legged dolphin and funky dolphin. You'll extend, the, uh, hover the left knee and then extend it back just straight up uh, to start off. So your toes will still point down. You'll bring it down, you'll hover and you'll extend it back. Toes will still point down and you'll hover and then we'll start to open it up. Extend the left leg and roll the thigh out, squeeze the glute and then bring it back in to hover next to the left knee. So it's opening up and then we're rolling the thigh back in and bringing the knee down next to the right. Keep going with that. Keep pressing the left hand, keep doing a little squeeze in that left elbow. Right shoulder blade is pulling down onto the back ribs. So push down into your right forearm a little bit and uh, demand that your upper core help to stabilize this movement. You might find that now it becomes a little bit more spacious to extend that left hip back because your upper right half is helping with it. Then bring that left knee down whew, next to the right. You can come up and roll your shoulders a few times. We'll come up into a dolphin. First place. So I know like one, we all have different stories. If one of your shoulders is less comfortable with weight bearing, then by all means, feel free to either just practice your funky dolphin if you wanna go for asymmetry on just one side or feel free to just stick with regular dolphin. But we'll have our first funky dolphin option here. We'll all start off in our dolphin again. Dolphin pose, you're gonna have our forearms on the ground parallel. You can use your block on its widest setting again in between your hands or making two little L's with it, or you can interlace your fingers together. So I'll show you interlaced here. It's always a great way to go, especially if you're tighter in the shoulders. I tend to be a little tight in those shoulders. We'll have those forearms down and release our neck. Tuck, tuck, tuck your toes, take a big inhale. Exhale, push into your forearms and hover your knees and then keep lifting and, and really hug your low ribs in. So you're hoisting your pelvis up towards the ceiling. Now we'll all bring our left foot in and we'll lift the right leg. So we're lifting the right leg, bend the right knee, keep the right thigh still pointing down to the ground and hold your right heel really close to your glute then start to pulse it. So like you're trying to press your right sole of your foot onto the ceiling and you'll just let gravity put it down and you'll keep pulsing it. Now, if you want to try funky dolphin, so I have my, four, my fingers interlaced here. I won't recommend it if you have your fingers interlaced, but if the palms are down, we can slide our right hand back in line with that left uh, uh, elbow. You don't have to do it, but it's an option. Pull the right elbow in and feel a little extra lean into that left side, push onto the left toes and then bring that right foot down, knees come down. You can come up again, get a little shoulder roll. So you should be feeling a little extra heat in that left arm. So again, if the fingers are interlaced. I'm just saying maybe stick with that because chances are we, we want to still work on your stability and your opening before we start going necessarily asymmetrical. So there's options for everybody here. We'll bring ourselves back down again, interlace the fingers. And if you're like that, stick with that this whole time. You're still going to get your glute pulse in. Otherwise, forearms are down, release the, the neck here. You could even start off with the block thing, but you'll still move the hand back. I'll show that. So we'll hover the knees, pushing the forearms and the toes equally and hoist your pelvis up. The bottom foot can keep a little bend into it. So the right foot will be down. It might move a little more center like we did before, lift the left leg. Everyone's in dolphin still, holding the low ribs in, releasing your neck. Pull your left ankle towards your glute and then pulse. So like you, I like to magic, I have a, like a painted sole of my foot and I'm trying to paint the ceiling with little footprints and kind of like modern art exhibit. <laughs> keep going like that, keep pulling your low ribs in. If you have your palms on the ground, the forearms are kind of parallel there, you could slide your left palm back in line with your right elbow and whoo, that right arm's really gotta work. Pushing your toes, the right foot more. Lift, don't let your left heel creep away from your glute, that's hamstring taking over. And then left foot comes down, come down into child's pose. Hips can go back or stay over the knees. Forehead comes down and give yourself a nice breath through the left. Always feels good. Certainly we all go through the week, have our little moments that make us all clench our jaw. <laughs> it's Saturday, now I can let go that jaw clench, that, that thing we saw that made us go. Ugh. All right, let's come on forward. 
Let's get a little inversion practice. Always good to stabilize the shoulders. And that's a big thing that we do in this together class is bring it all together. So you're gonna to wanna to find a couch or a wall, dolphin or down dog on the wall. Uh, I, don't, I haven't tried funky dolphin on the wall. I'll play around with that and maybe try to bring that to class one of these days. But we'll get our feet measuring out. So you, again, you get that measurement of the legs. So what we're doing here is before we even go upside down, we're already creating the shape we're gonna go into when we go upside down. So first things first, you want your pelvis neutral. You don't wanna feel like you're spilling out of the back or spilling too far forward, ribs popping out. You're gonna have that pelvis right underneath of the shoulders. We're gonna reverse this, but everything's aligned. Hands can measure that out so you have like your little distance of where the legs are. Remember, if we go so straight with the legs that we start to round, uh, we're gonna be imbalanced in that spine. We're gonna have a hard time engaging our core. So get the bend into the knees that helps you stay aligned with your shoulders over the hips. And as you flip it around, the hands stay in place, but you know, they change the direction that they're pointing. You're gonna tuck your toes. Come to your first downward facing dog. So just real quickly here, hover the knees, place the pelvis up, keep the weight equal in the hands and the feet. Like, think about it. Don't push your weight back into your legs because we're already moving more towards our hands. So you're 50% in the hands. You're going to start to move more into that as you push in your hands, straighten the elbows. Feel like you can dial the left hand out to the left, the right hand out to the right, pull the low ribs in, and then walk your feet up your couch or your surface. And relax the neck and pull the ribs in. If your legs weren't straight on the ground, bend them a little bit, but still push in your feet. Relax the neck, grab the floor, push into your hands, straighten your elbows, keep that dialing out feeling. I know that's the first one I always forget about. Dialing my left hand out to the left, right hand out to the right. They don't actually move, but I'm feeling that energy. And you let yourself come up and shake it out where you need it. You can drag forearms down, a little shoulder rolls nice. Keep the low ribs in, keep on working it and keeping it together. Yeah, how's it been feeling lately? Nice. It's looking good. Yeah, let your neck relax a little bit. I know, I know it's hard. <laughs> that looks really good though. That's the cervical spine likes to hold on because it's like, I can do it. I can I can hold it up and everything. Uh, so when you're ready, we can make our way on up to the top. Grab a little water, wipe off some sweat, shake out your wrists. We'll get ourselves ready to move. Of course, you have a block still handy. I'm going to bring the floor a little bit closer. So I'll show you how to, uh, to use the block. If uh, going to the floor with your hands feels like it's difficult, feels like you really have to, you know, round the spine and stuff like that. Never fear. I'm showing you blocks on the highest height variation. So either follow Allie or me, whatever you're feeling more of. This is like advanced. I'm going to be beginners. Inhale, arms reach forward and up. Ribs stay contained, exhale, hinge at the hips. Hands come down to what they come down to, whatever it is, floor blocks, right foot steps back. Right knee comes down, lower the top of the foot. Inhale, reach the arms forward and up. Arms reach up, feel the right glute engage. You gotta engage this, so you're gonna feel it in your knee. Hands come down, tuck the right toes, lift it, and then step back into plank. Left foot steps back, hands are under the shoulders. Knees lower or don't, lower all the way to the ground, head and arm bones stay lifted. But you wanna make sure those shoulder heads stay lifted. Pull back your hands in cobra, inhale, pull, root your tailbone, long in the spine, don't lift the chin, tuck your toes, press and lift. Through plank, head into downward facing dog. Walk the feet in a little, let the knees bend, right foot steps forward, left knee comes down. You could also have your hands up on a block to assist with that step forward. So I wanted to show that too. Left knee comes down, inhale, arms reach forward and up, 90-90, low lunge, ribs are contained. Hands come down to the floor or the block. So I'm on my highest height here, but my palms are connected, step the left foot to meet the right, shoulders are on. Look at that, spine is long, hinge at the hips, top of the mat, inhale, arms reach forward and up. Exhale, hinge at the hips, hips move back, torso comes down, left foot steps back, left knee comes down, inhale, arms reach forward and up. We'll be doing this in a second. Bring your hands down at heart center and then make little fists and interdigitate. So bring your knuckles together three times here. We'll exhale to the right and then come back to the center. We'll exhale to the right. You're pressing your knuckles together, getting a little engagement in your shoulders. Exhale to the right. Back to the center. Hands land. Step back into plank. 
Head to the arm bones, stay lifted, lower the knees, exhale, lower all the way to the ground. Inhale, pull back your hands and root your tailbone. <sighs> Lift, downward facing dog, core lifts up in the back line, hoist the pelvis high. Left foot steps forward, right knee comes down. You can have those hands on the block or not. Rise up to your low lunge. Inhale, arms reach forward and up. Hands come down, heart center interdigitate the knuckles. So again, it's like the knuckles just kind of like click together there and then we'll twist to the left. Come back through center. The twist is coming from an engaged right glute. Twist the left and back through center. Twist the left, back through center. Hands come down, load it on the blocks or floor, but step the right foot to meet the left. Inhale, arms reach forward, hand up. Exhale, hinge at the hips, hands come down. Right foot steps back. Right knee comes down. Once again, inhale, arms reach forward and up. Hands come down, interdigitate. Inhale, exhale, a little twist. Inhale, come back through center. Exhale, a little twist. Inhale, back through center. You might even go just a little bit further than center. You know, don't go, don't go too crazy with it. Don't just go out into the, the wide open, but allow yourself to get a little bit of rotation to the left and then through center and maybe a little bit more to the right. All the while your knuckles are pressing together, you're creating engagement in your scapula and opening around the thoracic spine. More time, twist to the left. We'll bring our right hand down, left hand comes to left hip, modified side plank. You can kick the right leg out like a little bicycle kickstand. Left leg goes back behind you and we're all gonna lift it here. So that left leg is down, I want you to lower it down, tap it, and then lift it back in line with your hip. Lower it down, tap it, lift it back in line with your hip. Now keep that going, tap it, lift the left leg back in line with your hip, Look down at your right hand. Make sure it's directly underneath your right shoulder. I want you to notice if it's forward, out in front, or behind you. Get this like column set up with your right arm and your left leg. One more time, tap it. Lift up and back behind you. The left hand comes down. The left knee comes down. Bring your left forearm forward. Line your left elbow up with your right palm. So we're in our quad. Right hand is underneath the right shoulder. We have our left forearm down, our left elbow is down. You could bring your left knee a little bit more center. We did this in the warm up. Ribs are in. Press into that left foot and hover the right knee, and then extend the right leg back and externally rotate it. And then bring it back to hover next to the left. Extend it back, externally rotate it. Bring it back. Keep going like that. Press in that right hand. Feel a little dialing out into the right hand to help wrap that right elbow in. So, really, though, think about your shoulder blades staying on your back ribs. <sighs> Get another two and one get ready for this step your right foot forward 90 90 low lunge on the other side so interdigitate left glute is rooting knuckles are together exhale a little twist to the right and then just come back through center a little twist to the right keep rooting the tailbone that's looking really good good alignment of the shoulders over top of the pelvis there and you'll come through center or maybe a little bit more into the left but I don't want you to let go of the core. So here's the thing, right? Like everyone's got a different range of motion. And I'll admit, like some people can go a little deeper in their low lunges. You might be able to go a little bit further in your twists. But what I want you to always keep in mind, whatever your range of motion, your flexibility is, is that it's always coming from a place of strength and stability. You feel held together no matter how deep you're going. As soon as we lose our engagement, it's when we risk you losing some of that good, uh, good stability around that soft stuff, that one that stability. So we'll twist one more time to the right, bring the left hand down, the right hand's on the right hip this time. It helps you guide that right leg back as you swing it back into modified side plank. The left foot could either be right underneath you. This is challenging. Look at me struggle with it. Or you could kick it back behind you a little bit. That helps with the balance. I find it's like a bicycle kickstand. The right foot comes down and then it lifts. The right foot comes down and then it lifts. So look down at that left hand real quick. Make sure it's in line with your left shoulder. A lot of times it'll tend to get in front of you or behind you, maybe a little bit uh, forward. So keep lifting and lowering that right leg. Now your right glute, it's working. Point your tailbone to your heel and don't let your core go. Remember, keep that engagement, place the stability and strength. Now lift that right leg, bring the right hand down, the right knee down. Move your right hand forward and your right elbow will be lined up with your left hand. The right knee comes a little bit more in center and then hover that left knee, press in the left hand, dial it out, pull that left elbow in, extend the left leg, open up the hip. Bring it back down to hover next to the right. Extend the left leg, open up the hip. Bring it down, 
next to the right. Extend the left leg, open up the hip, bring it on down, next to the right. You keep going like that. You should feel some firing in that glute medius. It's getting heated up in there. Guess what? Your glute medius literally contributes to every single action that the hip does, except for like hip flexion. <laughs> And um, I think like a little bit of internal rotation. I don't think it does that. But literally every other movement, like every movement we're having to do to open up this leg, this is your glute medius, every single thing. We'll bring that left foot back one more time. Then step it forward, press through the hands, come up into a 90-90 low lunge for a moment. Just check the pelvis. Bring your hands down to the blocks or the floor. Step your right foot to meet your left. Hands are on the ground. Exhale. Inhale, arms reach forward and up. Stand tall with a long spine. Exhale, hinge at the hips. So you move the hips back in space. Step or hop back, plank pose. Lower, knees or not. Head of the arm bone, stay lifted. Pull back your hands in cobra. Inhale, lift, downward facing dog. Press into your hands and hoist the pelvis up tall. Take a big breath in here. You can breathe in your down dog. Breathe in your back like a big balloon. Weight is equal in the hands of the feet. Lift the pelvis towards the ceiling. Option to bring the feet together a little closer to the hands and bend and straighten. It's called coil and spring. You push through your toes with it. Come to the top of the mat, maybe a little push through your coil spring, maybe a step from your down dog. Inhale, arms reach forward up. Everyone meets standing tall at the top of the mat, and then we exhale, hinge at the hips for another round. Step or hop back. Plank pose. Lower, knees or not. Head of the arm bend, stay lifted. Pull back your hands and inhale and cobra. Root your tailbone. Neck stays long. Press into the hands. Hoist the pelvis up. Downward, facing. Dog, feet come together, press the hands, grip your fingertips, palms press, wrap the elbows in, bend and straighten, push through the toes, bend and straighten, push through the toes, you can try a little hop, come to the top of the mat, inhale, arms reach forward and up, it's a step, it's a hop, it's a float, exhale, hinge at the hips, hands come down, press or hop back, lower, knees or not, have your arm bones stay lifted, pull back, root, root, root for your tailbone, tuck your toes and lift up, the baseball season's over for Pennsylvania baseball fans, so, <laughs> all right, all right, grievance is aired. Come into your downward facing dog, bend and straighten your knees, push through your toes, bend and straighten your knees, push through your toes, <laughs> on your down dog, have some joy with it, get a little hot float, whatever you want, try it out, come to the top, exhale, inhale, arms reach forward and up, one more time through here, exhale, hinge the hips, hands come down, step or hop back, plank pose, keep your core on, Lower down. So what we were joking around about there is root your tailbone, pull your core, direct your tailbone towards your heels and feel that lengthens your spine. Push in your hands and lift up and into downward facing dog. From your down dog, three times here. Don't pick up your hands. So again, I'm going to show you if your hands like to pick up, bring them onto these two blocks here. Otherwise, hands are down like Allie has there. Look at your left foot. Step your left foot just as far forward as it'll go without losing the engagement in your core and without lifting your hands. So step it and then step it back into down dog. Just step it forward, just as far as it'll go. It doesn't matter how forward. And then back, one more time. Step it and back. Last time, step it, rise up for warrior two. In your warrior two, bring your hands down to either side of the pelvis. Notice here, if there's any spillage in the front, or any spillage in the back. You can step your feet in, feel really long through the torso. And it's okay to have a shorter stance, but you wanna make sure the tailbone is rooted and it feels like everything here is sitting evenly. So again, it doesn't feel like nothing's spilling out of the front. It doesn't feel like we're slouching or rounding in the back. Arms reach out, flip the front palm. Right hand comes in front of the chest, exhale, reach up. <sighs> Reverse your warrior. Come back through center. Forearm to thigh, right arm reaches over and frames out the right ear, pushing your right foot, squeeze that right glute. Come back to center, inhale. Hand over heart and exhale, reach your left arm up, core is contained. Come back to center, inhale. Left forearm to left thigh, right arm sweeps over. Right foot presses into the floor to lengthen the right side. So reach with your right shoulder blade. One more time, come back to warrior two, hand over heart, reach up, reverse. We're getting long in that side body by holding the front body in. Come back through center, forearm to thigh, right arm sweeps over. Right arm can also reach up. So whatever feels better for you there. So sweep the right hand down, take a side lunge to the right. So parallel your feet and sit back in the right hip, then push in your right foot with the feet kind of parallel, sit back in the left hip. Keep going. 
your feet can have a little turnout to them. Everyone's uh, leg bones and hip sockets are different sizes. So different things work for different people. I get a little swing in my arms. It just kind of helps me with the movement. I can also put my thumbs in my hip creases and physically pull your hips back. That's a great way to help yourself out. Oh, all right. Come to the front of the mat, hands land, left foot steps back into downward facing dog. Weight is equal in the hands and the feet. Core is on without picking up your hands. So feel free, bring them on to the blocks. Step that right foot forward. Don't pick up the hands, keep the belly lifted. Step the right foot back, downward facing dog. Step the right foot forward, step it back. Step it forward, it could just be a little bit. Step it back, step it forward, rise up, warrior two. So you can always readjust your stance once you get there. Don't worry about how wide it is or how far forward you can step. Root your tailbone, lifting the front body so don't spill the energy out and don't spill it back. Arms reach out, you can shorten your stance. Press that left foot into the ground, left hand over the heart, flip the front palm, use an exhale, pull into the front of the body so that your right side gets really long. Inhale, come back through. Forearm on thigh, left arm sweeps over. Squeeze your left glute. Come back through center, inhale, right hand up and whoosh, exhale, get long. Inhale, come back through, right forearm to right thigh and left arm sweeps over. Come back through, hand over heart and come back through, forearm to thigh and really pressing that left foot, reach with that left hand. Then come to the left, parallel the feet, Side lunge to the left, side lunge to the right. And feel free to adjust your stance here too. You can have a pretty narrow stance in your side lunges. It's more important that we're working a little bit of, so from the side it would look like, my stance is pretty narrow here, but I'm focusing on moving my hips back in space. I will get wider with my feet over time, but if I don't teach my leg bone which direction to move from the start, then, well, you know, we're kind of like, solving one, oh, you're fine, solving one thing, and then, um, you know, maybe ignoring another thing. So we'll bring ourselves one more time to the back, and all the way to the front, hands can be on the blocks or the floor, step the right foot back, downward facing dog. So here's where also the hands on the blocks can be really, really helpful. Feel free to use them or not. We're gonna step our left foot forward again, far forward as it went. If it didn't get quite up towards your right hand, Take your left hand around that left ankle and woo, move it forward. Hey, that worked. So the right hand is down. If it was on a block, keep it on a block. If it's on the floor, you're welcome to come up onto your fingertips at any point. You have lots of heights on the block as well. Right hand is down again underneath the right shoulder. Left foot's underneath that left hip. Bring your right hand, left hand around to the right glute. Squeeze your right glute. Make sure all the fibers of your glute are working. Like do a, It's almost Halloween. Do like a little spider crawl up and down your right glute. <laughs> Activate it. And then you can keep your right hand there, or sorry, your left hand on uh, the right glute, lean into the right shoulder, pull your right shoulder blade back on your back ribs, that's it. Let your right ear go to your right shoulder. Option to let your left arm up, but if you'd rather hang out on your right glute, do that too. Keep pushing your right toes. <sighs> lean into that right shoulder, press, press, press. And then like we're coming into variation, bring your left forearm onto your left thigh, rise up into goddess, turn the right toes out and set. Bring the arms down by your side. Let's get our little uh, milking the scapula move. So relax your arms by your side. And again, know your goddess could always be narrow and uh, less wide or a little bit wider and lower, but keep your tailbone rooted, core is contained. We're gonna bring our shoulders up to our ears and then pull your shoulder blades back together you can try to like pinch your spine, but don't let your low ribs pop. Then you can pull your shoulder blades down towards your hips and we'll just let them relax here. So pull them up to your ears with some effort and then back towards each other, then down to your hips and then you just let them go. You pull them up, retract them back, let them depress down to the hips and then let them go. Three more times, up, together, down, release. Up, together, down, release, embrace the fascia release. <laughs> and then now just bling your arms a few times. It's like a little boing, boing, boing. Yeah, now that we did the engagement, we can let them release. Keep a little engagement on those glutes. So now we're coming to optional funky dolphin, but <laughs> relax your shoulder bops back to the front of the mat. Hands land, 
move if so your hands will frame out your left foot and if you want to go to three-legged down dog just send your left leg back but if you want to try dolphin where your hands landed move them back a little bit more and then send that left leg up lower the forearms down whoa how about that push onto those right toes you can bend the left knee that can actually help with that little bit of engagement or feel free to move the left hand back it's in line with the right elbow if you're going for funky push in the right toes push in the right toes push into the right toes Pushing the right toes, a little asymmetrical balance. Left knee comes down, right knee comes down. Come on up into your quadruped. Pull with the hands, open the chest and cow. Push with the hands, spread the shoulder blades and cat. One more. Press those hands, spread the shoulders. And then come to neutral, down dog. Tuck your toes, hoist the pelvis up. You can have your hands on those blocks. And I'll recommend, if you like a block for your Twisted Crescent, try, try it out with your down dog. It'll actually probably help your step forward too to set it up. So blocks can be used for an entire practice. We'll do a block class one of these days. Hands will be down, knees will be bent. Big inhale here, beat in the back like a big balloon. Step the right foot forward, the left hand stays down. So if your right foot doesn't get quite up to that left hand, you can always use your right hand to pick it up, a little assistance there. Left hand is down on the block, the floor, or the fingertips. Right hand comes around to the left glute, pushing your left toes and get your fingertips and just tap up and down your left glute from the top to the bottom. That should get you pretty aware of the whole, uh, you know, structure of the glute, then lean into your left shoulder. So it's like you're pressing into your left hand, pulling your shoulder blade back. Remember what we did, those shoulder scrubs, like when you depressed your shoulder down towards your hips, do that move here in Twisted Crescent and you'll feel this opening and release your left ear to your uh, left shoulder and you might get like a in the neck, it's, it's an adjustment. So just let release and hold the core steady. Maybe through the lips with a right forearm to right thigh and open up the goddess. Turn your left thigh out. You can always inch the feet in together and come up a little bit higher. Arms by your side. It might even be a little easier to see my shoulder blade, but pull the shoulders up to the ears. Retract them back and then draw them down. Let them release. Pull them up to the ears, retract them back. Let them release. Keep going like that. So to the ears, together and down, release. To the ears, together and down, release. Hold the low ribs in and just keep rooting your tailbone so I can, I can feel when I start to do this movement, automatically my ribs want to pop forward. I want to go into my low back. It's like, nope, you stay long. Let's get some movement around these oh, shoulder blades. All right, let's relax and just bop by our side. I need to remember this one when I'm <laughs> stressed out in traffic at a red light, right? You just get a little <laughs> shoulder bop and All right, let's slow our shoulder bop down. We're gonna windmill to the front of the mat, hands land. So hands either frame out that right foot, three-legged down dog. You could also do this with the hands on the blocks, but you'll skip the dolphin entirely or move the palms back just a little bit. Then as you send the right leg back, lowering to the forearm, since your lever is shorter on your arms, to make it a little easier. Pushing your left toe, you can bend the right knee, option to move the right hand back in line with the left elbow. So here's that funky dolphin, up shown. Strong and powerful here. Left forearms pressing into the ground, pushing left toes, pushing left toes, pushing left toes, spread your toes. Notice if you tend to go into your pinky side or your big toe side, could you kind of even? Well, if nothing else, don't, don't go away from your big toe side. I tend to drift away from that. Bring your feet down, oh, come onto your hands. Quad your head, inhale, exhale. Inhale, pull forward and cow. It would help if I told you what you're going to do. Exhale, pushing your hands and spread your shoulder blades. You could also, as you're pulling, and as you're pushing, you could also lift your palms and tense your fingertips. That'll just help you get a little wider into it. Come back through center. We'll go ahead, find a little child's pose. Move your forehead side to side. Keep a little press of your hands down on the ground, so just like Funky Dolphin. We're going to keep this center on the shoulder head. Come back up through center. Quad, hover the knees, hoist your pelvis, downward facing dog. Weights equal in the hands, or you bring those feet in a little bit closer. Bend and straighten. You can try a little press and float. You can do that press and float. You just want to feel that power, and then come on up to the top of the mat. Grab a little water. Wipe off some sweat. We'll get ourselves ready to put both the sequences together. It's looking good. 
this asymmetrical balancing in dolphin, it's not easy stuff, but we practice it in lit because we are very rarely gonna have symmetrical situations in our life, right? It's kind of one of those realities, like it's, it's not fair. <laughs> there are imbalances everywhere. So we need to practice being in states of imbalances to, to kind of learn how to manage those things and to feel ourselves out and to learn how when we are in a state of imbalance, how we can actually maybe use that to our advantage to strengthen some things that previously were potentially uh, weaker aspects. So we'll come to top when you're ready, find that mountain pose. We'll be changing some things up here. Know that when I offer something out, it's just an option. So you're welcome to stick with the first suggestion or to move on to a, a different suggestion as they come up here. So for mountain pose, hands by your side, inhale, arms reach forward and up. Exhale, hinge the hips. Step the right foot back, but keep the right knee lifted, high lunge, inhale, arms reach forward and up, pushing that right big toe. Hands come down and interdigitate, so knuckles come together. Inhale, exhale, twist the left, back through center. A little twist the left, back through center. You could be a little further than the center, but I'll warn you, it'll be more challenging now with the knee up. Keep a good engagement around the glutes. Don't let those low ribs pop. Keep them contained. Not about how deep you go in the twist. It's just all about feeling that centered rotation. One more time, twist to the left. Bring your left knuckle down to your right glute and reach your right arm up. Then press into your left glute. Take this little twist to the left and pull your left shoulder blade onto your back ribs. Feel your right front hip getting a really big stretch here as you reach your right arm up. Squeeze that right glute. Lift, lift, lift. Really good here, everyone. Right hand comes down, side plank or modified side plank. So feel free to lower the right knee or bring the left leg directly back into that full side plank. If you're in your modified side plank, you can lift the left knee, bend the left knee and grab the left foot. If you're in your full side plank, you can lift the left leg still, bend it, externally rotate it like we were doing in our funky dolphin and then lower the toes down to the dancer stable. So two options there. You could be opening up the quad, in your modified side plank, or you could be in your dancer's table, like Ali is wonderfully demonstrating there. And you're gonna release into your plank. Everybody meets in plank. Lower the knees or not, lower all the way to the ground. Go wide with your fingertips. We're doing a wide cobra. So elbows up, palms are off the ground. You're tenting your fingertips again. You can keep your forehead on the ground if you want. Inhale, tuck your tailbone and lift your belly up and into your low back. Pull back with your fingers. So it might naturally lift your head off the ground, but know that you don't have to extend it. Let's take one more breath here. Bring those hands back in, rise up through plank and in to downward facing dog. Two options here, step the left foot forward like that or shift your chest over your hands for standing L. Right foot comes down, step the left foot back into down dog. Left foot steps underneath the left hip, standing L, or you just step it as far forward as you can. The right leg lifts for standing L, the palms are down. Right foot comes down, step back to down dog. Left foot steps, right leg lifts, standing L, right foot comes down, left leg goes back, down dog. Left leg steps, right leg lifts, standing L, right leg goes back, left leg steps back, down dog. One more time, left foot step, right leg lifts, chest is over the hands, standing L, breathe here, elbows are straight. Bring your chest over your hands, maybe lean into it. Just leaning back on those shoulder blades, keeping that core engaged. And from here, we'll take our right foot down, rise up, or your toe. Right foot is down at the back, left foot is forward, right hand comes over the heart, exhale, reach up. Reverse your warrior. Inhale, I'll come back through center. Forearm on thigh, right arm reaches over. For your variation, three times here. Back stroke it up, back, forward, around, up, back, forward, around, up, back, forward, around, up, back, forward, around, and then right hand down, twisted crescent on the block, the floor, the fingertips, left arm can come up. You could also check the right glute with that left hand. Everybody push into your right big toe. So sorry, you're checking your right glute with your left hand. You're lifting the right glute up and away from the floor. You could also bend the left elbow and release the right ear. 
stay like this, or you can load the left leg and come forward into a revolved half moon. The left hand is on the outside of the left hip. Just a little extra load for that left leg, helping to open it up. And if the hand was on the block, you could still move the hand forward. And then the right foot comes down, turn, side lunge to the right, side lunge to the left. Side lunging to the right, and to the left, to the right, to the left. One more time to the right, to the left, three-legged down dog, dolphin, or funky dolphin. If you're doing funky dolphin, right hand is forward, left hand moves back, right forearm comes down, left leg goes up, left hand is in line with that right forearm, pushing the right toes. You can bend the left knee and even externally rotate the left leg, or you're in three-legged dolphin with both forearms down, or you're in a down dog. But if you get a press, it just comes from leaning into those shoulders and feeling a little sense of engagement around those hips. So you bring yourself down onto the knees. Let's all keep our forearms down. Release the neck. Inhale, pull the chest forward. Let's cat cow on the forearms. Exhale, press. You're restricting your pelvis to get more movement in the, thigh, in the ooh, ribs. I don't know, let me know if you feel more around the thighs. <laughs> Except a little press and root. I don't. They're pretty locked up for me anyway, though. All right. Come to the top of the mat. However you choose. Mountain pose. Let's take it to the other side. Inhale, arms reach forward and up. Exhale, hinge at the hips. Hands come down. Left foot sits back, but don't lower the knee. Rise up for high lunge. Left toes are pressing. Fingers or knuckles come together. Interdigitate in front of the heart. Inhale, and as you exhale, twist the right. Take a little inhale through center. Exhale, twist the right. You might go a little bit more to the left, but again, fair warning, it's a little more challenging now that the knee is off the ground. We have less in contact with the surface of the floor, but we're still using the same amount of engagement by pressing that left big toe in. Keep your neck pretty still too so you know, it's kind of tempting to want to like move with it but kind of keep that still so you can really get a true opening in that thoracic here and then rib stand we'll twist one more time to the right core is on right knuckle comes to left glute reach the left arm up push more into your left toes you should feel a big opening in that front left hip flexor lifting the left glute into the right knuckles pushing your left toes reaching up with the left hand ribs have to stay contained don't pop them. Stay long here. Left hand comes down. Side plank or modified side plank. So you bring that right ankle on top of the left ankle. Or you lower that left knee down. Right leg is still back. So for our side plank, we're going to lift our right leg. Option for all of us to bend the right knee. Either come into that dancer's table or a side plank, knee down, quad stretch. If you're in that dancer's table, your right leg lifts. You bend, you externally rotate it. Lower the toes down. You got to push in your right toes to lean on your left shoulder. And that left hand never gives up. You hold it strong and steady. Same goes for the knee down. Don't give up on that left hand. Lower the right hand down. Plank, lower all the way. Hands are wide, fingertips, elbows up, forehead down. Inhale, root the tailbone, pull back with the hands. Your forehead doesn't even have to lift, but if it does, that's, that's good too. Hands come down. Hands underneath the shoulders, tuck the toes and press up, plank into downward facing dog. Remember, two options here. Step the right foot forward. Actually, three options here. Bring it forward into your standing L. Left leg lifts. Left foot goes down, step back into down dog with that right foot. Right foot steps forward. If it just steps as far forward as it can, that's great. Or you could shift your chest over your hand and lift your left leg standing up. Left foot down, right leg back, down dog, right foot steps. Left leg lifts, chest over the hands. Left leg down, right leg back, down dog. Two more. Right foot steps, load it, lift the left leg, standing L. Left foot down, right leg back, down dog. One more. Right foot steps, lift it, standing L, or just step it as far forward as you can. Option to really bring that chest over the hands, push onto your right toes, pull that right leg in towards your torso. And so when you go up, you try not to let it leave the torso. That's actually really reassuring. You know, it's very hard to fall forward with this right leg in and on. Now lower your right foot on down. We're gonna open up for warrior two. Right foot is forward, left leg is back. Breath here, left hand over the heart. Exhale, reach up with the right hand, pull the core in. 
back through center, form to thigh, left arm reaches over, squeeze the left glute, stroke it, up, back, down, and around, up, back, down, and around. Uh, it's like a backstroke, if you can imagine, if you're going swimming in a pool, from the backstroke, I actually am not really much of a pool swimmer, but there you go. <laughs> All right, and we'll take that left hand down, twist a crescent, block, floor, fingertips. Right hand, check that left glute, and then either keep it on the left glute, reach the right arm up, or send the right elbow to bend and release the left ear. Option to stay there or to load the right butt and come into more of a revolved half moon. So left leg lifts as you load the right foot, the left hand stays down. I think you could always come back to the sacrum, back to the left glute and make sure it's lifting, holding steady. And then as we lower that down, side to side lunges, turn to the left, side lunge to the left, side lunge to the right. You can even bring your hands down your shins and do a little bit more releasing with it or step a little bit more upright, whatever you like. Here's our last three-legged down dog, dolphin, funky dolphin, funky forearm balance, whatever you're going for. Turn to the top of the mat, left hand will be down, right hand moves back, right leg goes up, left forearm comes down. If you're going for that funky, palm is down, left forearm's in. You're pressing the left toes, you can bend the right knee, keep that squeeze of that right glute in. You can externally rotate a little bit. So you gotta hold that left thigh in as you shift into the shoulders. And that really does help to maintain that balance around the pelvis. You just release the neck here, holding core steady, lower down. So you come down, knees come down, forearms down. Maybe turn the palms up this time, take a few cat cows. Feel what kind of opening you get. But the area you were just working and creating heat in, now uh, breathe. But those muscles, that tissue, it's hot now. It's, it's ready to get worked. It's, it's nice and melty. It's not frozen and rigid. And then come around on your back. Really nice. So working a lot of asymmetry. We'll finish with a little supine twist. I'll go this way to show one angle. I'll keep you that way. Go more in between our mats so you don't run into the wall. I think that'll be nice for you. Yeah, and then pull your knees in. And uh, let's all start dropping our knees over to the left. So drop them off to the left. Your left arm's underneath you. Your right hand comes on top. You might even grab your block and rest it underneath your head if that feels comfortable. Otherwise, your neck can be on the floor. Your head can be on the floor. And reach your right arm up like a clock stroke overhead, back and around. And you might even bend that right elbow as you come around and go slow, go go a little quicker. You go at the pace. It feels good there, but now just let some oh breath come into that scapula that we've been working, strengthening so much. So each side you can keep even or just trust your body to give you as many as you want on each side. We'll make our way over to the other side. But again, you can certainly do more. So again, pull your knees into the center and Drop them off to the right. Reason being, I, I want your knees in close to your torso so that your low back stays long. Again, we're trying to target the thoracic spine to open. Left arm sweeps up, over, and around. You can follow your left arm around like with your gaze or you can just let your gaze kind of stay forward. It's really up to you. When you're ready, come through center. And then you can either let yourself lay out long in Shavasana. You can keep the feet walked in. Really, it's up to you. I'll even encourage, you know, if you like your, your legs walked up the wall to some degree, whatever is comfortable for you there. You might wiggle the feet wide on the mat and drop the knees in towards each other. But now let yourself just release. the muscles around your face and even around the core. I know you've been holding them really well this whole practice, so let that go too. Around your jaw, around your toes and your fingers. Good job. 
or whatever is holding on in the hips. And then um, finally just shimmy the shoulders out from underneath you a bit. So you're welcome to stay in Shavasana as long as you like. Otherwise, you can take an inhale and reach the arms up and overhead and stretch the legs if they're not already. Exhale, side out. And slowly gather the legs back over towards your torso. Roll your way over to comfortable side that's calling to you and then make your way up to a comfortable seated position that feels authentic and dignified to hold right here. 
allow yourself to feel in tune with that full core connection from the base all the way up through the shoulders into the neck. Finding that balance and that alignment through focused engagement. Get a little bit funky so that we can deal with those funkier situations in life. Sometimes things are a little off balance. And so when we practice being off balance ourselves, we just prepare ourselves both energetically and physically for those moments. And so light in me honors the light that shines in each and every one of you, and that light that truly shines from within us and connects us all together. Namaste, and I bow to that light.